Opening day is here and the Giants 2024 roster is officially set. There were some significant surprises, some key players optioned, and one very popular player released. So we'll get into all of the ramifications of this roster next. You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspic, and on the show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday, talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. I've also been hosting this show now for five years. This is my sixth season coming up here in 2024. Thank you for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, so check us out there. If you have not already, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe button, whatever you can do. Uh, This is a daily show. And the season is getting underway today here in San Diego. And so, um, yeah, we have a roster, and that's definitely where we're going to kick things off. We're going to talk about the the roster itself and then the biggest surprises, the takeaways, all that. And so, for me, the I mean, we also have a lineup, and we'll get into that. But the biggest surprise to me personally is that Joey Bart made the roster as a third catcher and so this to me is temporary you're not going to be able to carry three catchers for very long at all and so the idea here seems to be to roster Bart to start the season have other teams kind of set their rosters and then try to sneak him through waivers or just give yourself a little bit of extra time to try to trade him and the idea of getting him through waivers would be that you have to designate him for assignment and hope that no other team claims him which might be difficult given that he's not far removed from being considered a top prospect and he is a catcher and there's a lot of demand for catchers but it's just untenable to carry three catchers on the roster all season and so the other two of course Patrick Bailey who is just far and away clearly the number one catcher on this team. He is in the opening day lineup, of course, as you would expect. And Tom Murphy, who is new maybe to a lot of fans, but we saw what he could do in the exhibition game that he started against the A's, in which he hit a couple of home runs, both against a left-handed pitcher. And that's kind of what he's here to do. And they signed him to a two-year guaranteed contract with a third-year club option. And so Bailey and Murphy are set as the Giants' two main catchers. So Bart making the roster is more about just buying some time and trying to protect some inventory here and, and not wanting to just DFA him ahead of opening day. And so that that's kind of the explanation there. And then the other thing that jumps off the page a little bit it it doesn't really come as too much of a surprise but the Giants did select the contract of Nick Ahmed and he is also in that opening day lineup as the shortstop and so Marco Luciano this is you know an options game and uh also Marco Luciano really struggled in spring you can't really say the same well he came on hot at the end although not at the very end but Um, you can't say the same about Luis Matos, and that also was an options game. And so I'm going to try my best to explain why I think it completely makes sense what they've done here and that in the course of a baseball season, you end up needing these guys. I mean, Luciano and Matos played a lot, well, Matos particularly a lot last year, uh, even though he started the season in AA and the Giants had a more crowded outfield than they have now essentially and so he will be needed but the the shortstop position so they go with Nick Ahmed a veteran someone who provides really stable defense like he's been one of the best defenders in baseball when he's been on the field the the question I have defensively about Nick Ahmed 
is the throwing arm. I believe that arm had, you know, problems and surgery and stuff, and it, it, it hasn't graded out as a good arm, um, although otherwise his kind of moves and actions and agility at short are really good. And so we'll see if that arm comes into play as a problem at all. But he's, he's a guy who, he, you know, he made a swing change. He's had some good seasons offensively, but overall he's not been a great offensive player. He is batting ninth, uh, well, yeah, ninth in this opening day lineup. So he's in there for his defense. And then you combine that on the left side with Matt Chapman and you know you've got Logan Webb going on the mound today in a real game yes indeed and you know ground balls are theoretically gonna be converted into outs at a pretty darn high rate when you've got Chapman you've got Ahmed Tyro Estrada had a amazing season by StatCast outs above average defensively and Lamont Wade Jr. a little bit maybe even underrated as a defender is starting at first base as well. And Wilmer Flores, he can hold his own defensively at first base. He's below average pretty much everywhere else, but at first base, Wilmer Flores is solid. And so, of course, Wilmer Flores has made this team. Of course, Tyro Estrada is in that starting lineup. But the the three things that jump out to me initially are Bart um, making the team. I don't imagine that they use him much uh, while he's on the roster. Um, he's They're just kind of stashing him there for now. Uh, they do end up going with 12 pitchers only, and so 14 position players. That's kind of the trade-off you make. And so not only is 12 pitchers something that's unsustainable, but having three catchers is just not something that they're going to roll with for very long. And that's not even to mention Blake Sable, who was optioned uh, several days ago. And so I think Sable is a is ahead of Bart even, but Bart makes the team because of the fact that he's out of minor league options. They couldn't send him to the minor leagues, and it was either put him on the roster or if you hadn't found a trade partner, if you couldn't find a trade partner, you were going to have to DFA him today. And so instead of doing that, they've added him to the roster. And then, like I said, the shortstop position as well, that goes to Nick Ahmed, Marco Luciano. It doesn't mean they've given up on Luciano. I mean, he never really has thrived in AAA. And so send him there, let him just kind of you know, break down the door and he'll get his shot eventually if he does so. And you know, I guess then turning the page, it's a very different situation in the outfield where Luis Matos had kind of a monster spring and yet he doesn't make the roster and guys like, I mean, the outfield mix, first of all, we've got our, we're going to get into this, but it's the what, 19th, 18th different left fielder. Uh, yeah, 18 different left fielders with Michael Conforto now starting in left. He's not signed for next year, so it'll probably be 19 next year. But Conforto, Jung-Hoo Lee, Austin Slater, Mike Yastrzemski, and Jorge Soler gets listed as an outfielder, but he's obviously more of a designated hitter. But the fact that Luis Matos doesn't make this team, it's going to upset some people, but I've kind of discussed this ad nauseum why I think... It does, in fact, make sense that you stick with the guys that you have. And I just want to emphasize, given that I know for a fact that Luis Matos is going to get plenty of opportunities this year, they're just not coming right out of the gate on opening day. So coming up in just a minute, we'll discuss more about that situation with Matos being sent down. uh, And we'll get into it in just a second. And before we do... Today's episode is brought to you in part by GameTime. GameTime is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which means getting tickets are even faster and easier. Uh, Prices on the GameTime app actually go down as we get closer to first pitch on any given day. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, GameTime takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. They've done that for me, and the two things that are my favorites, as you know, 
are the seat views. You get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. And if you're on the road visiting a team, maybe you're in San Diego right now and you've never been to the stadium, I mean, you want to see what is it that you're actually buying before you put down that commitment. And then the other thing is, is of course, money and the cost. And with game time, you get the lowest price guarantee, which means if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. For a limited time, all users get $20 off any MLB purchase of 150 or more in the game time app with code first pitch terms apply. That's code F I R S T P I T C H for $20 off from March 25th to April 14th only. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, here we go. We are going to get into the decision uh, to send Luis Matos to the minor leagues despite the pretty monster camp that he had and the fact that he came in with all this extra muscle and the fact that Austin Slater has barely played in the spring, especially in the field. And there's just a lot of, um, this is like the new belt wars, you know, or at least it's a sub, it's a offshoot of the belt wars is the Mike Yastrzemski, Austin Slater wars where people kind of want to fight this. Um, thanks again for making lockdown giants. Your first listen every day, Every dayers tomorrow, guess what? We're going to be breaking down opening day today. Logan Webb on the mound for the Giants and you uh, Darvish for the Padres. And that game is coming up in just a couple hours here. And so we will be breaking that down tomorrow. I do just want to give a reminder about postcast. Not only do we cover your team every day, but now we're giving you instant episodes after every single game. Check out the Locked on Giants postcast right here on the Locked on Giants podcast feed, as well as streaming on the Locked on Bay Area YouTube channel. So that'll be a live stream. Get rapid reaction to all the biggest moments with the Locked on Giants postcast. That's going to be hosted by Eric Engel. It's going to show up on this feed. Um, It's not replacing me. Eric's not replacing me. We're working together. The postcast is a different show, and I will still have my same show as usual. But Postcast is just an addition, and he'll have one after this opening day game kind of instantly. And so be on the lookout for that. Also, are you tired of watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all the shouting? Make make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you... Can't miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network where, as you know, it's your team every day. And so, with that said, I do just want to get into the fact that Luis Matos was optioned and Austin Slater, the the question was only, um, was Austin Slater's elbow essentially going to allow him to make the opening day roster and the answer turns out to be yes and so just today one of you i sorry i didn't i don't remember who your name was um but was saying love your show but just drives me nuts when you talk about how a good pinch hitter referring to austin slater should make the team over what this person said a likely star i think that's a little bit like you know, let's hope so, but a a likely star. I don't know if I'm quite there yet with Matos. He's got a lot to prove, but that, that Slater should make the team over him. And, and again, I've said this a million times, but it has to do with like protection of your inventory. Um, because you just, you cannot just choose Matos and send Slater to the minor leagues. He does not they do not have the right to send Austin Slater to the minor leagues. And believe it or not, Slater does have a lot of value. Um, You know, war was mentioned. He's not, first of all, he put up over two 
war in 325 plate appearances just two years ago. Last year, he was banged up and not right. Like, and he had, it wasn't his greatest showing. But um, it's not just pinch hitting. It's also, there's a lot of lefty pitchers in the league. And uh, he starts against left-handed pitching, Slater does, and he's literally one of the best hitters in, against left-handed pitching in baseball. If you go back, uh, Slater made a swing change. And if you go back to when he made that change, all the way back to 2020, and you look at the numbers against left-handed pitching, he's up there with like Mookie Betts and just some of the best players in the game in terms of what you get in and at bat when it's Austin Slater against a lefty. And so there's value in that because there's a lot of lefties out there, whether they're starting a game or whether they're a reliever and it's an important situation and you've got a couple guys on and you're down a run and and like Mike Yastrzemski or Michael Conforto's up and a tough lefty comes in to be able to use Slater in that situation has won them a lot of games. I mean, war doesn't really do it justice in this case because to be able to have that in your back pocket as a weapon is legit and look i i love luis matos like i i'm super excited about the future for luis matos uh but just recall i mean he played in 76 games got 250 plus plate appearances last year when he started the season um in double a for the first time ever being above high a and so the fact now that he's going to be in triple a where he is like literally just down the road right in sacramento um the first kind of injury which it's a 162 game season people make a big deal of the opening day roster when as other like somebody maria guardado or susan slusser tweeted out today like a big deal is made about the opening day roster, but it literally could change tomorrow. Like we might see a uh, Mike Yastrzemski's going on his, I heard him say on the broadcast that there's his wife, uh, Paige is scheduled for an induction to have their second child tomorrow on Friday. And so you're going to see maybe Yastrzemski go on paternity, paternity leave. And maybe Matos is the guy who gets called up immediately. So maybe he's not even, he's quote optioned, but maybe he's like not even been sent to Sacramento. Maybe he's even in San Diego. And so, um, he'll get his shot. People get injured, especially like Conforto has had his injury troubles. Yastrzemski last year had a lot of injury troubles. Um, and again, Yastrzemski, it's the same thing, although it is slightly different because technically, technically Yastrzemski could be optioned, but he's like, I don't know. I just don't. I guess you could say there's a case to make to do that. But at the same time, I mean, that's it's just kind of backwards to me. I think Yastrzemski um, gets the benefit of the doubt. I mean, he, he, he's been a solid player in his major league career. He really does hit right handed pitching well. Um, the question is, is he a platoon player? And if he's a platoon player, you do have a great answer in Austin Slater. But if you've got a couple of platoon players, if Michael Conforto, if both Conforto and Yastrzemski kind of really struggle against left-handed pitching, I think eventually, like, Matos is going to be more of an everyday player eventually. But maybe they ease him in, say Slater's elbow starts bothering him, and then they ease him in as a guy who plays against lefties. But eventually, the plan with a guy like Matos is to have him be an everyday player. And especially with Bob Melvin as the new manager, it's going to be different than with uh, Gabe Kapler. But I think the most obvious kind of guy would be Michael Conforto. But the thing is, they're... I know it's a sunk cost, but they're paying him $18 million and he is, you know, he has a good major league track record. So anyway, I understand like if, if the roster was bigger, you would have Luis Matos on it and probably Marco Luciano as well. Those would be like the first two guys to make it. But the fact is it's a 162 game season. People get injuries. Things happen. Matos will get his shot. Trust me. Like, and it probably will be soon. I mean, with Yastrzemski going to 
go on paternity leave, I would imagine that Matos immediately becomes that guy. And, and he, he may just start and st- like, you're not going to, that's the thing about Slater is he has proven that he's kind of a platoon player. He hits lefties, but he doesn't really hit righties. But with Matos, there's more of a chance that he can hit both. And so, you know, as early as tomorrow, you could see Luis Matos in the starting lineup. So I'm just not losing a ton of sleep here over this decision. And I have full, full confidence that Matos is going to get his opportunity. And if he performs well, look, Conforto's contract is up at the end of the year. Slater's in his last year of arbitration. And so he's a free agent at the end of the year. So kind of projecting forward, Luis Matos very much looks like a long-term piece here it's just not happening immediately on opening day 2024 but i i would predict at least 300 400 plate appearances for luis matos this year and if he hits well um then more and that's he'll get his shots trust me so anyway coming up in just a minute how about the rest of the roster how about the lineup how about the pitching there's a lot more to get into and we'll do that in just a minute and before we do today's episode is brought to you in part by our good friends over at prize picks prize picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in north america they're the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports it's just you against the numbers that's for me definitely a preference instead of battling thousands of other players including professionals and sharks you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in and so um you know you now that baseball is here you're gonna have daily opportunities to just look at whether it's the giants or any other team uh, more than or less than on any number of numbers. And so uh, one of the great th- things too about prize picks is that they are um, accessible in more than 30 states, including including the great state of California. Prize picks also now offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account this baseball season. Download the app today and use code locked on MLB all lowercase, for a first deposit match up to $100. Download the app today. Use code lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Uh, Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Today's episode is also brought to you in part by FanDuel. That's right. FanDuel is the, you know, number one place for you to get in on the action during this Uh, crazy time of March madness, but you can say goodbye to that busted bracket and hello to FanDuel because you can bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's numero uno number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. And for me, the the way to do this is to look at who is the most um, heavy favorite. And you place your $5 bet on the favorite. And if that $5 bet wins, you get 200 in bonus bets at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Again, just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and go ahead and bet on college hoops until they cut down the net. All right, as promised, we are going to round out this uh, opening day roster situation and discuss uh, the pitchers who made it, and how about how about the opening day lineup? Um, one other guy, by the way, who did make it, who's worth mentioning, Tyler Fitzgerald. I think we we've predicted that for a while. Farhan Zaidi gave a pretty strong hint that Fitzgerald would make this team, so that's good for him. The versatility is what Fitzgerald brings. He can play short. He can also play outfield, and so he gives you that ability to fill it. Like they, you know, kind of need a backup shortstop. You could say it's Tyro Estrada, but then that's not great. And then who's your backup second baseman? So Fitzgerald just gives them a little bit of extra coverage there. And I've been impressed with just the quality of his at-bats 
basically since I saw him in the major leagues last year and then throughout spring training as well. So anyway, Tyler Fitzgerald does make this roster of 14 position players. So the full roster, just to break it down, I I gave you the three catchers, Bailey, Bart, and Murphy. Uh, Infielders, Nick Ahmed, Matt Chapman, Tyra Estrada, Wilmer Flores, Lamont Wade, and Tyler Fitzgerald. And then the outfielders slash the DH, Michael Conforto, Jung Hu Lee, Austin Slater, Jorge Soler, and Mike Yastrzemski. Uh, It's the pitching where it gets interesting. And so um, they just went in alphabetical order here, so I'll do the same. Uh, Camilo Duvall, duh. Kyle Harrison, kind of, I mean, duh, but also a big deal. He's going to get that shot right out of the gates to be, I think he start, he's starting Friday, like number two starter. It would be Blake Snell if Snell was ready. Blake Snell is on this roster, though. I was wondering, like, how are they going to deal with that exactly? So not only are they going with a short number of pitchers, like they're not an even 13-13 split. They're going only 12 pitchers. But also Blake Snell is part of that staff, and he's not available to pitch in this initial series. And so they are they need some length out of um, Webb and guys behind him. But thankfully, some of the guys behind him are longer relievers, so we'll get to that. Jordan Hicks, duh, by the way, dominant performance against the A's, super, super impressive. Five innings, 10 strikeouts, no hits, one walk. Uh, Really intrigued to see what Jordan Hicks can do in 2024. He's going to start that third game. Luke Jackson, another duh. Here's our first non-duh. Eric Miller, left-handed pitcher. So I had predicted Juan Sanchez, but Eric Miller was already on the 40-man. The weird thing is they had optioned him earlier in the spring, and so they did kind of use an option. But if you know you're going to option him again, then like you you only get so many options per year. But when you say a player comes with like three minor league options, that means three different years in which you can option them. And so they've used up uh, one of those. I, I Even though the minor league season... Maybe it doesn't count yet. I'm actually not even sure if it counts because it was before the season started. Uh, Tyler Rogers, Taylor Rogers, no surprise there. Uh, Landon Roop, this is is a big one. Um, Landon Roop going to make his major league debut. He's barely played in the upper minors at all, but has just had a really, really impressive uh, showing in camp. It's not really just about numbers. It's about the quality of the pitches. He's got just a big nasty breaking ball and i'm really excited to see he's a guy who can give you length so if logan webb or kyle harrison or whoever doesn't go deep into a game landa roop could kind of fill some innings for you and he'll be making his major league debut as will eric miller i believe when I, yeah eric i just want to make absolutely sure before i say that out loud eric miller will in fact be making his major league debut when he debuts for the Giants, if he does. Um, And Blake Snell, like I said, makes this team. Ryan Walker, no surprise. Logan Webb, obviously no surprise. Keaton Wynn makes this team as well. So there's uh, some young pitching there sprinkled in. Keaton Wynn, definitely a candidate to start maybe the fourth game of the season, but also could be a candidate, like I said, if if they need length out of the bullpen, then you've got Roop and you've also got Win, but then you'd you maybe have to have a bullpen game in the fourth game. And so for Snell, though, to be immediately on the roster tells me that he's pretty close. I think today, either today or tomorrow, he's going to pitch uh, in a minor league game. And so he could be ready to go from what I've heard uh, in his basically missing one start and then starting against the Dodgers in LA right after this San Diego series. So with that out of the way, here is the opening day lineup for you. Jung Hu Lee is in center field, going to be making his major league debut and Giants debut, of course. Jorge Soler batting second. I kind of like that. Get that power in there right away. Um, Big bat um, up high in the lineup. Number two spot in the order is like the new three or four. You know, that's it's, it turns out it's an important spot in the lineup, and it's not like you want your slap hitters there. You want your beef, and number two spot is a good spot for a big bat. Lamont Wade Jr. playing first, going to get platooned like 
probably in an important situation, you're going Flores or Slater. Uh, probably Flores because you positionally you can just keep him there. Matt Chapman making his Giants debut, hitting cleanup. Mike Yastrzemski in right. Tyro Estrada at second. Conforto, like I said, the 18th consecutive different left fielder to start for the Giants, going all the way back to Bonds. Patrick Bailey behind the plate, batting eighth. And then Nick Ahmed batting ninth at short and Logan Webb on the mound. So I can't wait. The game is just a couple of hours from now. So by the time you're listening to this, I hope you hear this before the game. Um, It could be very, very close to first pitch. And so I'm pumped. Eric Engel will have that postcast on this podcast feed, not on the YouTube channel, but on the Locked On Sports Bay Area YouTube channel live after the game. Um, So just a reminder about that. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. Check me out on Twitter at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out a lot. So thank you in advance and thanks to everyone who's done so already. I cannot wait. I really can't to be with you again tomorrow, breaking down opening day. Let's not overreact unless they win. Unless they have a great game, then we'll overreact. But otherwise, it's just one of 162. Even if you win 100 games, you're going to lose 62 times. And so, you know, it happens. Anyway, can't wait to be with you again tomorrow. Thanks again for listening. Go Giants. Happy opening day. You are now Locked on Giants.